Howdy everybody, this is Yuri the Blender Magus. In this series, we're going to be going over the basics of Blender. In this first video, we're going to be going over navigation and the user interface. So without further ado, let's get started. So when you first open Blender, you're met with what usually is a cube, a camera, and a light. Probably a ring, something like this. This is your 3D view. Your 3D view, you have three different axes, your X axis, which goes in the red line, your Y axis, which is the front and back, which is represented by this yellow line, and you have your Z axis, which is up and down. To move around in the 3D scene, if you have a mouse, you hold the middle mouse button and click. If you don't have a mouse and you need to use your number, you, you need to use your mouse pad on your uh, laptop for some reason, go to edit, go to preferences, go to input and click emulate three button mouse and then click emulate numpad if you don't have a number pad as well what that'll do is you can now hit alt and click and you should be able to move around your 3d view just like you would if you had a mouse and if you don't have a number pad on your keyboard you can use the numbers that are on top of the letters to go to your front view and side view uh, like you would if you had a number pad and that is what indeed those numbers do. So if I hit one, I'm in the front view. If I hit three, I'm in the side view. If I hit seven, I'm in the top view. If I hit zero, I am in the camera view. And if I hit five, I am in orthographic view. So if you learn these different views, you can zip around Blender pretty quickly. Now that you know how to change your views, you, nav uh, you can, like I said, you can navigate by clicking your middle mouse button. You can also zoom in and out. Uh, or if you're emulating a three button mouse, you can hit control and alt and click and that'll have you zoom in and out as well. You can pan the view by holding shift in the middle mouse button. And again, if you're having the, if you're having to use the emulate three button mouse, you just hold shift, alt and click and you do the same thing. To manipulate objects within the 3D view, you have three main buttons, G, R and S. G is for grab. R is for rotate, S is for scale. These are the main buttons that you're going to use to manipulate your objects in 3D space. If you want to duplicate your object, you hit shift and then D. And that'll allow you to duplicate your object. To make your duplication final, you left click. Or to make that position final. If I hit shift D and then right click, I have a duplicated object, but the position is still the same. So you want to be careful about that. To delete objects, you just simply hit X once you've selected them. To select in Blender, you hit right click. Blender has an option to select with left click. However, I'm going to be teaching it with right click. Uh, you can follow along either way, uh, but there are a few things that'll be different. So you'll want to look up, you want to look those up. To move your 3D cursor back into the center, you want to hit Shift S and you can use this pie menu to move where your 3D cursor is. So we're going to hit cursor to world origin and our 3D cursor is back to the world origin. If you want to move your 3D cursor anywhere else, you just simply left click. Your 3D cursor is where objects will be created in 3D space. So if I move my 3D cursor over here and hit shift a to create an object which is the keyboard shortcut for creating objects and create a uv sphere the uv sphere is created where the 3d cursor is so if i move my 3d cursor over here and i hit shift a again and i make a cylinder the cylinder will be made where the 3d cursor is You have different ways of viewing 3D objects in the 3D viewport. So if I hit Shift Z, we are now in the wireframe view, which is basically a see-through view, which you can view your individual uh, faces and geometry a bit more clearly than in the regular solid view. So that's Shift Z. However, if you just hit Z, you're presented with a pie menu that allows you to go through the different views. So right now we're in solid view. However, we can go to material view, which gives us a shaded representation of our 3D objects. And we can go to the rendered view, which gives us 
what our objects will look like with our actual lighting and render setup. We can delete these. You also have a couple things you want to consider here. You have different layouts which you can choose from in order to do different types of editing. So you have a modeling layout, you have a sculpting layout, UV editing, texture paint, shading, animation, rendering, compositing, geometry nodes, and scripting. Uh, for the purposes of this series, we're really not going to be messing with scripting, geometry, nodes, or compositing. However, we will check the rendering, animation, shading, texture paint, UV editing, modeling, and layout boxes. Maybe not texture paint so much. That's a bit more advanced. In order to properly see what's going on in your 3D view, you have what are called collections. So this collection contains everything except the cube. In order to put the cube back into the collection, you can just move it into the collection and there you go you have your cube here your collection is basically you know just like a box that all of these objects can be put in so if I cut the eye off on everything in the collection then nothing in the collection is visible however if I just cut the light off on individual aspects of the collection then those things will not become visible same thing with the camera here the camera turns off the renderability of these objects which can be useful for texture baking and so on. Your properties tab down here enables you to, if I have the cube selected, again with right click, I can go to the object properties here and manually change the location, the rotation, and the scale of the object. I can also name it from cube to box and you see the name changes in the outliner tab as well. I can also add modifiers here. We'll get more into that later. I can also change the material. And again, we'll get more into that later. But I'll show you what you can do real quick. Creating a material is as simple as creating a new material. Changing the base color changes the actual color of the object. And you have a multitude of options down here to edit the type of material you want your object to have. Like this metallic shader, for example, cutting that all the way up makes your object metallic. Cutting it down, less so. Adding a clear coat kind of makes your object more plasticky. Cutting it down doesn't. Adding roughness can make your object more smooth or rough, as it were. Specular is specular. And you can change all types of things. Again, we'll get more into that later. And then you have your timeline down here. This is where you can animate your object. So right now, we don't have any keyframes on our object. However, if I hit I, I can hit location, rotation, and scale. And now I have a keyframe down here. If I drag this slider to frame 60, and in our 3D view, I hit G to grab, and then Y to move on the Y axis, I'm gonna move the Q back, and then I hit I, location, rotation, scale. I now have a keyframe here. So now, when I move in the timeline, the cube animates. So, those are the basics of the 3D viewport, and your layout here in the next video i'm going to cover edit mode and the different ways that you can edit your object thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next part have a good one